It's rising, it's rising, the song of hope for my set free. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising up. Hallelujah to you, God of our redeemed. Hallelujah, you've opened blinded eyes to see. And we will praise you, yeah. You are the everlasting God. Hallelujah. To you, God of every day. Come on. To God. Your glory and honor here on earth, just as in heaven we are shooting the reign of your kingdom. It's rising, it's rising, the song of hope for my set free. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising up.
Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That we are redeemed. The word says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the God of the redeemed. Amen. He is good. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah actually means praise the Lord. When I first got in church, I, I was 23 and I'd never been to church. Once on a Christmas, once on an Easter, and I didn't even know where anything was at in my Bible. And I got into church and they were singing this hallelujah chorus, this uh, real traditional Baptist church is where I got saved at. And the choir director would do all this and he'd go, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I got saved, and I had just got back from the clubs and doing all the stuff I was doing. And I said, you know, I'm not going to be singing this because I really don't know what hallelujah means. And I was sitting in the Sunday school that Sunday morning, and I asked the teacher, I said, you know, I really want to sing with everybody, so I want to start learning what all this means because I, I didn't get in church to come in here and act like everybody else. Amen. A lot of people just go to church to do what everybody else is doing and act like everybody else is acting. And if they jump and I'll jump. If they lift their hands, I'll lift them. If they shout, I'll shout. If they dance, I'll dance. I, I, I did enough things in my life the way everybody else was doing it. I wanted to know why I was doing what I was doing. So I said, uh, I said, what's hallelujah mean? He said, well, holla means praise. And I thought it was holler. My daddy hollered a lot. And uh, holla means praise. Lou actually means the and yeah, Yahweh means Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Stefan, if you could go over here real quick to first. Everybody stay standing if you could. First Peter chapter 1. See how quick Stefan is back there. First Peter chapter 1 verse 8. Real quick. First Peter 1 8. I got it memorized, but I'm going to let everybody look at it. <laughs> Man, I, got, I, we, we, I did tell them to take off one song tonight because I need a lot of time. I got so much stuff. Man, it might be the best stuff ever come out of my mouth tonight. I ain't lying to you either. It says right here, whom having not seen you love, in whom, say in whom, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing. How many of y'all come believing tonight? Yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Verse 9. Verse 9 says what? Receiving the end. Go over there. I'm on, I, I, didn't, I should have told you both of them, shouldn't I, Stefan? Watch this, what it says. Receiving the what? End of your faith or whatever it is you're believing for. So how many of y'all see the word believing? And then you saw the word receiving. Watch, go back to verse 8. What's between believing and receiving is rejoice with what? Joy unspeakable full of glory. I don't know what that looks like, 
But I do know that you can probably tell if somebody's doing it. <laughs> what you doing? I'm rejoicing with joy unspeakable, full of glory right now. Why? Because I'm believing. And if I go ahead and rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory, I'm going to be also receiving. Amen. See, you can't do half the word and get the results. Amen. Does anybody want to receive what the word says? So you come believing tonight, and in between the believing and the receiving is what we call charisma, charismatic folk. Uh, it's called rejoicing with what? Joy. Anybody happy tonight? Hey, let your face know about it. See, what I want to do right now is rejoice about the word we're about to receive before we receive it. See, faith actually goes ahead and rejoices before you get the answer anyway. So, you know, the word might be better for you tonight if you rejoice before you get it. See, a lot of people waiting to see if it's going to be a good word before you shout. It says right here, between the believing and the receiving is what? Rejoicing with what? Joy. Chris, see if we can find a happy, happy medium if you can, because now I done got sweating and it ain't even started yet. There's a happy medium somewhere. It was freezing while ago, now it's hot. So, uh... Praise the Lord. So, no, 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 don't sit down yet. Everybody stand back up. We haven't rejoiced like we got unspeakable full of glory yet. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you the word is good. We thank you that the word of God is alive, living in us. We thank you, Father. We rejoice at your word right now. We come believing for revelation. We come believing for change. We believe right now. Therefore, we rejoice with joy unspeakable. <laughs> and full of glory. Amen. says right here, I rejoice. They do it at the football game. We can do it in here on a Wednesday night. I believe you're going to receive something tonight that will change you forever. Amen. says right here, if, you, or if you're if you going to receive something, go ahead and act like you already got it right now. How would you act if everything you needed, you had it right now? Right now, with joy. Do it with a smile on your face. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe the word will be better. I believe the atmosphere will be better. Amen? The word will get better to you if you go ahead and act like it's good anyway. Amen? It'll be a lot better for you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of us just need to rejoice. Yeah, some of us need to go ahead and get happy. Well, I come out of quiet church. Well, this, you in the, this ain't that one. Amen? We in the one that rejoices with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen? Like I say, I don't really know what that looks like, but I believe it might look like something. It might look like we look just in. Let's do it again. Glory. Hallelujah. I believe. I believe. Everybody I believe. I believe. I believe that tonight I will receive. Hallelujah. Directly from heaven. I rejoice with a joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. No words to describe it. We just rejoice at your word tonight. And we thank you, Father. We'll be receiving that word tonight. Because, well, Father, we're already in faith. We thank you that praise is the highest form of faith. And we came full of praise tonight. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that this word will change us and it'll take us from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Amen. I just want to do that because it always helps for you to come to get the word with joy in your heart. Amen. Glory to God. On a Wednesday, Pastor, we really got to do all... Yeah, on a Wednesday, amen? Wednesday. No better time than Wednesday to get, go ahead and get happy. Hallelujah. And I did, like I say, I canceled one song because I think I got some of the best stuff ever come out of my mouth tonight, and I'm serious. So I got to hurry, and I, want, I wanted a little bit more time, amen? Glory to God, it's already 725. <laughs> well, praise God. Don't seem like it to me, so we'll just go with what it seems like. Amen. We've been, we're looking now. We're starting Wednesday night on authorized. Authorized, we, and actually subtitle is the believer's authority. Amen. How many of y'all glad you got authority? How many of y'all glad Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over with the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Amen. How many of y'all glad that's good news right there, that he said, I give you power. Wherever your power comes from, that's really what makes it good or not. Amen. If whoever gives you power don't have any power, it's not good news. But if the one who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the one who is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, tells you, I give you power. How I many I know, wait a minute, I can get, oh, I get what from who? From you. I get some of your power. He said, yeah, I'm going to give you some of mine. Amen. So that's good news right there. It really, it's really considered gospel. Amen. Gospel means good news. And we've been looking. The Lord told me two messages to preach right after we talked about the resurrection of Jesus. One of them is in Christ, and that's on Sunday morning. This one is the believer's authority. 
Because if, if you don't get all the revelation on either one of these, you're going to be lacking in your Christian life. Amen? Because if you think God is going to do everything for you and make everything happen for you, you won't exercise your authority. You won't trample on anything. You won't stomp on anything. And it, if you're not taking authority over some things in your life, they'll take control of you. Because actually, authority means control, power, and dominion. Amen? So really we know God told Adam, He said, Behold, I give unto you power is what it, Jesus told his disciples but then God told Adam he says I, he said let us create man in our image and in our likeness and let them have what dominion over the fish of the sea fowl there and over all the earth we're going to look at that in just a second but I wanted to start it somewhere tonight and I do want to move pretty quick because I have a lot of things to say I believe I got fresh bread amen I mean, I know the Word of God is bread, amen, and we got fresh bread tonight, nothing stale for you, amen. It's going to be fresh right out, of the, not right out of the stove in heaven. So I wanted to start here tonight, and I wanted to, the Lord told me to go right here to define one word first, and the definition I want to define, Stefan, is sovereign. Everybody say sovereign. sovereign. Say the Lord is sovereign. Yeah, he's sovereign. Yeah. See, hurricane comes, kills 100,000 people, a tsunami comes, and everybody say, well, the Lord, sovereign Lord. He just does whatever he wants, when he wants, how he wants, don't matter. He's what? He's sovereign. Well, let's look at the definition of sovereign, because if you have a faulty definition of sovereign God, then it's going to be a faulty belief system, and this faulty belief system will lead you in the wrong direction. Because if he's really sovereign like most people think he is, then this message we're preaching on authority, you can chunk it in the trash can because it really don't mean anything. Because most people think that God's just making everything happen and if it, you know, good, bad, and whatever. I used to ask a guy, I said, so sovereign means God can do good or God can do evil. He said, well, no, you know, he didn't make it happen, but he's in control and he allowed it to happen and, it, and everybody's confused. Sovereign means this right here. Sovereign means not dependent upon nor subject to any other power. <laughs> right? Y'all writing it down? It says it's not dependent upon nor is uh, sovereign. Sovereign means not subject to any other power. One that possesses supreme power and authority and is supreme ruler. Amen? This means right here, there is a supreme ruler here, and he is Jehovah God. Amen? How I many I know God created all things? Amen? Created heaven, created the earth, created everything, and he is called sovereign God, or I like the last one, it says he is supreme ruler. Or you could say it like this, he's the supreme being that makes the rules. Oh, wait, let's see, if that, let's see what kind of rules he makes. Because if he's making the rules and he is sovereign, it means he's the rule maker. And we're going to have to do everything by his what? By his rules. Amen. He's calling the shots. He's the rule maker. No, nowhere in this definition do you see where it says, and, God, and he, this, this person makes all things happen. See, if you faulty on this doctrine, you'll come up with sayings like, everything happened for a reason. Oh, and it'll sound religious, it'll sound churchy, but the devil could have done it, they could have done it, anybody's flesh could have got involved and done it. If God is making everything happen and he's in complete, total 100% control, he don't really know what he's doing. Say amen. He's not doing a good job, amen, because it's bad. Everybody say it's bad. Oh, yeah, God's sovereign, though. He's making it all happen like this. No, man jacked it up a long time ago. Didn't he jack it up? Now, we don't go put everything on God. Man messed stuff up. But God is called sovereign ruler, the one who created the rules for the entire universe. How many of y'all know he hung the moon and he set the rule there? He hung the stars. He made the rules. He put the sun where it is and he made the rules. He spun the earth and he made the rules. And it's, it, we still obey in his what? Rules. Creation is doing just what God told it to do. He says, I am supreme ruler. I make the rules. Amen. And then he made man. He created everything. And first God, he made he had a prized possession on the way. And he had he made five days of things. And on day one, he said, Let there be light. Day two, he's put some let me go down on my notes right here. Day two, I put them all down. And day two he says, Let there be bodies of water that separate the land. 
I mean, I remember that in day three. He said, let there be, let there be a firmament, firmament over the earth where there's clouds, there's atmosphere, and there's going to be some stuff. I mean, I know it's still working because the ruler said that's the rules. Amen? Now watch what happens. The ruler said right here also, let there be grass and seed-bearing plants. Some of y'all glad there's still grass and seed-bearing plants. The ruler's still working. Amen. You're going to see he's still working. Let there be a sun and a moon to divide the night and the day. How many of y'all not glad? You, you, how many of y'all want to walk out there and see if it's still there? No, it's still there because the ruler said, the rule is you're going to be there. Amen? You're going to be hanging right there. Isn't that cool? Isn't it? I mean, God is too cool to me. The sun is going to come up in the morning. Actually, it's not going to come up. We're going to turn back around and say, there it is again. Look at that. that, that there it is again. Every, why? Because there's one who made the what? He made the rules, amen? Next thing he said, let, let us put birds and creatures to fill the earth and the fish of the sea and let them produce after their own what? Kind. How many of y'all know that's still happening right now today? Page one of your Bible. Say page one. Somebody made some rules. And they said f birds are going to be flying around, fish is going to be all in the sea. And how many of y'all know there's a lot of them out there? Went fishing with James last year on his boat. Want to go again this year, amen? And, uh, <laughs> amen, I want to go again. And, man, I'm telling you, we went out there for, for some, what you call, what do we fish for? Red, red snapper, and I'm talking about Evercast. I mean, I said, we got dominion. Boy, look at this. We got some dominion over the fish of the sea. Pop, red snapper, Evercast. Ever cast. All I know is the sea is full of fish, amen? I mean, I know there's a lot more fish in the sea. <laughs> Amen. There's a lot more, and they keep on reproducing all the time. And it, here's what it, and it says right here, that this supreme ruler set all these rules in place for his creation. He did all these things on day one, two, three, four, and five. Day six said, I got a special something coming. He says, I'm now going to make what? Man in my image. Go over there to Genesis 1, because we're going to start where we stopped last week. Genesis chapter 1, there's one that made the rules. And how many of y'all know that this creation that he created is still obeying his rules? Aren't you glad that the sun is not even a little bit closer than it is right now? Oh, yeah, you'd be like bacon, amen? How many of y'all glad that the moon is hanging right there and we're not floating around? Got gravity working just right, waves coming in, everything's doing just fine, amen? Because God said that's how it's going to be. How many of y'all glad about it? Oh, yeah, amen. How many of y'all glad the trees are here, and they're here for man? How many of y'all glad the, the air you breathe is because God put the tree here so it gives off what it is you breathe? He said, I got something coming. I'm preparing a place for a special something on the way. He said, this ain't just a little something now. I got, I got creatures of the field. I got the birds of the air. I got all this cool stuff, but I got, man, I got something on the way. Day one, day two, day three, day four, and day five, he said, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. But then in verse 5, but look, go down to verse 26. It says, And God said, Let us now make a man. Oh, look at, look at, look at the provision. Chris, will you hand me? I, I get it. You got a baby in your hand. It says, Let us make man. Oh, man, I didn't even know this was out here. I just glanced over. Praise the Lord. Amen. It says, Let us make man in our what? image amen and god said i'm about to create something special and he says you know what uh arch arch archangel uh which one was it gabriel which one's the big archangel michael and gabriel you got all of them up, but they all bad anyway amen anyway he said go get me a go get go get me a mirror he said i want to use my own what image i'm gonna make something cool down here and i'm gonna make him in my what Image, and if you want to know what God looks like, He probably ain't got all this right here. But see, <laughs> Amen, Amen. I know I need to be on that treadmill that's in our bedroom, and I'm not on it yet. So I'm gonna hey, every time I get in the mirror, I suck in a little bit, Amen. But it says right here, "Let us make man in our what image." And now I'm gonna make him in my image, and I'm gonna make him in my what likeness. He's gonna look like me. He's going to act like what me he's gonna be like me he's not gonna be god but he will be like god everybody say this see i am like god because he said and he's the one making the rules amen i didn't make the rules i didn't say it i didn't write it in the bible he wrote it amen so that just means right here that now god gets down here and he says let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let say them it should be circled in your Bible right now. Let who? 
let them have what? Dominion. If he would have said, let us have dominion, your Bible would have been totally different today. He said, let who? Them. Who is the one with dominion, control, and authority on the planet right now? God said it was who? I don't, I, he's the rule maker, amen? I mean, if he can keep that moon staying right there and the sun hanging out right where it is, and if he said, now, man, you run the planet. You take what? Control and authority. And if you don't take it, something is going to be coming that's going to try to take it from you. That's why he said, and subdue it. Amen? So watch this. It says right here, take dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl, the birds of the air, and over all the cattle, and over what? All the earth. Sounds like to me now, God has all this power, all this authority. He is this sovereign, rule-making, supreme ruler, supreme authority, supreme power in all of creation. And he made some rules to hang everything out there that you see. And then he made some rules for this home that he created for man. He made the earth for man, and then he put man here, and then he made rules for the earth. And he says, on that planet... Who's going to rule and reign? He said man is going to rule and reign. He's the rule maker, amen? He is the supreme ruler. And you can't argue with him, amen? You might say, well, Lord, you just reigned today. He said, no, I told you to. Lord, take care of this for me. He said, no, you take care of it. I gave you the power, authority, and dominion. Make it happen, amen? Man, don't you, if, if you realize how much power and authority you got, you might get excited tonight. Amen? He says, let everything, let, take dominion over what? All the earth. Some major revelation going to come out tonight. So just hang on. Everybody hang on to your chair. And just go like you're on a big roller coaster. Amen. Because you're about to get blessed. Because I, today I said, I text Angela. I said, cancel one of them because I got, I got to have at least, at least some minutes. Amen. I got to have at least 30, 40 something minutes. Amen. But, but now go over here in your Bibles if you would real quick. We're just setting a foundation. This is introduction again. We're on day, day two of introduction. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's no joke. Because you'll see in the bottom what, what I'm talking You'll see in the end what I'm talking about. Psalm chapter 115. Psalm 115. Verse 16. Psalm 115. Verse 16. Praise the Lord. Julia said, Daddy, are you wearing that to church? I said, Girl, I just left your softball practice and everybody ought to be fine with it. And they're not religious. Amen. So that's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 115, verse 16. Highlighted, underlined it. You might need to know about it because if we're living on this planet, how many of y'all know it would be a good idea to know the rules? <laughs> Some people in the, in the, on the planet don't even know what the rules are. Amen. They're they begging the Lord for this, begging the Lord for that. Lord, please do something. He said, what else do you want me to do, sweetheart? I gave you my son. I gave you my spirit. I gave you my word. I'd put everything there for you. Now I'd appreciate it if you go ahead and take dominion like I told Adam to do. Amen. Now, in Christ, we've been put back. This is where Paul said last week, the introduction we saw was this, that he says, those who receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been authorized by who? By Jesus. To, to reign means to dominate, control, and take authority. Amen. Contro say control. Say God is in control. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> oh, wait, well, I'm glad y'all like, boy, that means I'm doing good. Amen? Because y'all stop. You went, wait, 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 yeah, boy, yeah. It's a trick. He's tricking us. You know what? Amen? But you know what? It sounds religious, doesn't it? It looks cute on Facebook. <laughs> looks you're cute on Facebook. Where's that? Boy, everything happened for a reason. This is one of the worst days of my life, but it may be the Lord trying to teach me a lesson. Back went out, foot went out, everything went out, amen. Lights went out, cell phone went out, everything went out, but everything happened for a reason. <laughs> Psalm 115, verse number 16, is very good in your Bible. It says right here, the heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth, say but the earth, but the earth has he given to children of men. Oh, it sounds like God might have gave us a planet. 
Amen. It sounds like you got a pretty good gift. He says, God gave man a planet and said, take control of it, dominate the thing, and go out there and increase and multiply and take over the earth for me. Amen. Looks like man got a pretty good thing going right here, don't it? Amen. He says, now I'll take the heavens, I'll take the atmosphere, I'll take the galaxies, but I'm going to give man the what? Earth. I wonder if there's any UFOs out there. Wonder if ET's out there. No, the weak man is on what? Earth. Any other life form out there anywhere? Yeah, on heaven. The Bible. Hey, say amen. Man, t- somebody go tell my mama. Amen. <laughs> She's looking for UFOs. Amen. And I'm telling you, man, he says I'm going to put living beings and I'm going to put them on the what? Earth. Amen. And then he says right here, and he has given this to man. How many of y'all glad God gave us a planet? How many of y'all know He told Adam, take what? Dominion. Let them have dominion. So God gave us dominion, gave us authority, and then gave us a place to take that authority. And you know what? Your authority works on this earth. I didn't make the rules. I didn't say nothing. I, I'm just reading about it and studying and saying, well, I didn't make, the rule maker said He gave me a planet. Oh, amen. And it says right here, I'm supposed to rule over all this earth. I mean, I know if you figure out who you are in Christ and the authority you got, there is no devil in hell. There's no sickness that can stick around. There's no depression that can stay in your house. Your kids got to get right. Everything got to line up. Now that you realize who you are and what you got. Everybody say they say, I am. Who God said I am. I can do everything. He said, I can do. I have. Authority on earth, not Mars, but earth. I reign here. This is my house. I made, I didn't make the rules. God made them. I dominate here. Amen. And the devil knows you do too. And if you just start telling him, devil, get on at my house right now. I'm tired of looking at you. Get out of my finances. Get out of my body. Get out right now. I take authority here. I got dominion. Woo. Oh, we might run tonight. We might run tonight. Oh, it might get good because you know what? Here's what he said. He said, now let them have, give, God took everything else. And he says, now I'm going to give man earth. And see, I gave a kid. I had a convertible Toyota Celica when I was coaching high school basketball. And there was one of the youth that I just loved. him. he had a special place in my heart. And the Lord put it on my heart to give him my car. I, he was when I was youth pastor, and, and he come up. He was in the band, awesome heart for God, awesome kid. And I mean, the Lord told me to give him my car. I said, Lord, I like his car. He goes, give it to him. I said, praise the Lord. I mean, I know you reap what you sow, amen. And I'm sitting here, and I'm, uh, I said, and, and I knew one youth service, I was going to be preaching, and I was going to have my keys in my pocket, and I was going to throw them to him and say, that's your car, I give it to you. So I was preaching one night, and I was in there doing the service, and I threw him the keys. He called him. I said, that's your car sitting out there right now. That black Toyota Celica is yours, convertible. He said, for real. I said, for real. He said, I said, well, I, said I give it to you. And you know what? He still, it, my daddy said, I saw your car going down the road the other day with the top down. I said, that ain't my car. I what? I gave it to him. And if I gave it to him, there was no what? Strings attached. And I released it to him. And I said, that's yours. Oh, it's a revelation right here now. Because what God gave us a planet, he didn't say, I'll give it to you. But if you don't treat it right, I'm going to come bum rush the place back and take it back over. No, he gave it to us. And then man did mess it up. And that's why Jesus had to come in the form of a man. Oh, he, didn't, he could have just done anything from heaven, but he said, now I'm going to sin. And he told Satan, since you've done this, I'm no, now I'm going to crush your head by the seed of a woman. And Jesus come and stomped him around. He said, now you'll tread on serpents. You'll tread on scorpions. Over all the power of the enemy, nothing by any means now shall hurt you. Why? Because he gave it to us. And it would be like reneging on the whole promise if he gave it and then pulled it back. Here you go, you can have it. No, 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 you can't. I'm playing with you. Here you go, how about a planet? No, you can't have it. How many of y'all know that's not how God is? He don't give and take away. Turn that song off the radio. When he, go, he give and take away. <laughs> he'll give, but he'll take it from you. You never know what he'll do. He'll bless you, but he'll knock your house down too. 
He'll, he'll give you a house, but a tornado will come and flatten it. And just say, God is sovereign. He's in complete control. Because he gives it. And it's bad because it has a good beat. An awesome beat. You're like... And then you start singing it. And I was singing it one day. And it would come on in my car one day. And I had a four-year-old daughter sitting in a car seat. said, blah, blah, blah. I said, what's wrong, Julie? She goes, he don't give and take away. Amen. And you know why? God is a gift. For God so loved the world that he gave. Who are y'all glad he gave? Jesus. And he didn't say, no, never mind. He gives, and He gives only. He is good, and He's what? Good only. Amen? Now, if you're singing that He gives blessing and takes away sin, i sing that with you. Amen? If you're saying that He gives freedom and takes away depression, I'll sing that with you, but that's not what they sing. Amen? They're quoting Job, and then when Job said that in the book of Job, God said, be quiet, Job, and start acting like a man. And we all remember that, but we're quoting Job. I'd rather quote God, hadn't you? Amen. Job said, For the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And then they say it on gun smoke and they say it on everything else. Would the Lord be my shepherd? He gives and he takes away. And they sit down in the pasture and everybody thinks the Lord just took somebody home early. And we form doctrine off, off of Western movies. We form in beliefs off of old Westerns. For the Lord giveth and the Lord take them away. He took them away. If he took mine away, I'm not going to praise him. Are you, a, are you silly? I had a guy one time. I was at his house the day his kid got killed and the church come by there. And I mean, it's actually his brother accidentally shot him. And the, the, a lot of churches coming by saying, well, the Lord give and the Lord take away. Just praise him in your hard time. Man, I said, it'd be everything I had not to slap somebody. And I don't know if I'd slap them. I'd probably go ahead and hit them. You're telling me God took them early. I mean, I know a lot of people believe like this. Oh, God don't need to take nobody early, and he don't need another angel. Matter of fact, nobody you know that's ever died is an angel today. Oh, and God got another angel in heaven. Nobody ever was turned into an angel when they died. In the Bible, amen? But we got people thinking that people are going to turn into angels. They got their wings in heaven. Where is that at? You're going to get some wings one day and fly around. Hollywood tell you you are, but you ain't flying around heaven. Amen. And nobody you know has ever turned into an angel. The Bible says all of the angels were created. A third of them got in sin and fell, and it says there'll never be any more or any less. <laughs> but it's, it's sweet, ain't it? That's sweet. That, I know that my grandma is my angel. She's my guardian angel. Jeez, I hate to tell you. <laughs> but you don't want your mamma. I don't want my granny being my guardian angel. Amen. I don't want my granny showing up in a hard time saying, Fear not. I'm going to be like, What you doing here? What are you doing? <laughs> granny, what? I want my 12 foot angel walking in saying, Fear not down there, big daddy. I got this under control. Every time the angel showed up, he said, Fear not. Why? Because he was massive and muscular and showed up. Wasn't a fat, naked baby. You got fat, naked babies on keychains, got wings, and they say that's angels. If that's man, I mean, I, I'm some of y'all glad you don't have a fat, naked baby angel. My angel is way big, way. How many of y'all know that guy that was a tooth fairy? What's his name? Tooth fairy guy? The Rock. Man, The Rock don't look nothing like my angel even. Amen. The Rock, he is a bad looking dude now. He's, a, he's good looking. Amen. We're talking about far as seeing a guy usually don't say that, but that dude is big. He comes in the room, and I mean, the rock don't even look like. My, my angel makes him, the rock would see him, and the angel would say, fear not, rock. Why rock? Because rock look at him like, he, you don't want granny being your angel. I'm way off track right now, but I'm going to get back on track. Amen? I'm going to get back on track. But nobody that you know that's ever went home to be with the Lord, oh, I remember what I said. The Lord took him because he needed another angel. I heard it the other day where I had a cousin died three weeks ago, and I heard some of my family say, well, the Lord, he's just an angel now. <laughs> he ain't no angel. Everybody's thinking right now, I think. You ever had Paul say, we'll be raised up, made to be angels? <laughs> You'll be, you wait for your next life, you're getting your wings. Now, I think that was uh, the Christmas movie. What was it? That was uh, Jimmy, what was the name? 
<laughs> it's a wonderful life, amen. Daddy, daddy, a bell. They got their wings. He got his wings. Y'all remember that movie? <laughs> oh, we can form a lot of doctrine off movies, can't we? The Lord give, he take away everybody. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. You think that he's your shepherd because you're out in the green field and somebody died. And not e the, the Psalm 23 is not even for dead people, amen. It's for the living. <laughs> amen. Golly, I can't do this tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go on over here with me. Deuteronomy 28. God's always been telling man to get everything in control. He's always been telling man to get everything in Say, God has always told man, get it in control. Now watch this in Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. I've got to go a lot faster because I'm going to get everything said I've got to say tonight. And if I've got to talk real fast, you've got to listen real fast. Get your fast, fast ears on. Amen. Because I'm telling you, this is, I, this, that was introduction. We just lay in a foundation that who's in control? Say me. Say it bold, too. Say I am. Devil. You hear me? See, I know who I am, and you don't feel. I'm not going to be scared of you. He says this, that resist the devil, submit to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you as if in what? Terror. Take off running from who? Not God. Not Jesus. From you. You've been raised up together, seated together in heavenly places. All authority in heaven and earth, Jesus said, is mine. Go ye therefore and take dominion on the planet. See, we don't, and we said that kind of slow. Who's in control? Well, yeah, what I mean. It's no trick. It's not a trick. Who's in control of your life? Say me. me. Oh, yeah. See, because where you're out of control, it's not God's fault. <laughs> I said amen because the Lord gave me some revelation today. There's things I'm about to control. How about you? Because if I don't control it, nobody can and nobody will. Oh, God's done everything He's going to do, and He said everything He's going to say. He ain't saying nothing else about it. Now what you going to say about it? I think I'm going to start saying what He said. Amen. I think I'm going to say I'm more than a conqueror through Him that loved me. I'm blessed in the city. Blessed. In, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I think I got something to say now. Devil, I'm tired of listening to you talk. Listen to what I got to say. I'm going to say what He said, and I'm going to have what He said I could have. Oh, yeah. Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 8. Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. The Lord said, I will send a blessing on your barns or in your storage houses. The Lord's he said, the Lord will command the blessing on your storage houses. How many of y'all glad where, where you store stuff can be blessed? Deuteronomy 28, verse 8 says, on your storage houses and in all that you set your hand to. The Lord, here's the, now we're getting to the revelation from the earlier today that the Lord showed me this study and, and here's what he said how many hands you got how many hands y'all got see here's the revelation too if you're going to start taking authority you're going to have to start choosing what it is you're going to take authority over and take authority over it because it actually says he'll bless what you put your what he'll, set, he'll bless what you set your hand to now, here's the thing on our authority. A lot of people believe. And if God says, I've given you dominion over all the earth, where are we going to start at? Because how many of y'all know authority means what? Control. How many of y'all wish you could take control over everything tonight? Well, you can't. Amen. you got to pick and choose what it is. Today, what am I going to dominate today? you got two hands. Amen. If everything's a mess in your life, how many of y'all know a lot of people got a lot of messes? That means a lot of things are out of what? Control or out of what? Order. And God's given us the ability to get things back. What? In order. And if you're going to do it, you're going to have to start picking and choosing where to apply your authority. Oh, and I saw this today. And I mean, because oh, I can speak the Scripture, sweat, spit, holler, shout. Glory to God, I got authority. What you going to do with it? It's time for you to figure out what it is you want to put your hand to. What do you want to get order in? And let's go that direction and let's get some order in the house. How many of y'all know disorder is not of God? Chaos is not of God. So if everything is out of order, who's going to get it back in order? Say me. Now, everything, here's where I was reading this, and the Lord says, how many hands do you have? 
Because a lot of people there say, I got so much, I got so much out of order in my life, I just don't know where to start. Finances jacked up, kids jacked up, my job's out of order, everything I got's out of order, everything. See, but who's going to take authority and get it in order is who? You. Family's out of order, relationships are all out of order. So what it is that we need to do is figure out what it is I'm going to get in order right now. Amen? Amen. Now, you can't tackle everything at one time. If you only got two, ten, two hands, you can't tackle ten big messes. Amen? So if everything's out of control, you're going to have to back up. And see, this message is just a churchy, charismatic, sweating message that you're going to hear, shout about if you don't make a decision to make a change. Say amen. Because if you let everything stay the same, it's going to stay the same. But if you say, you know what? I'm going to take authority. I can't tackle everything right now because i got too much messed up. How many of y'all know if you, try, if you tried to pick everything that you was going to get in order and, and you said, now i got ten things messed up, but I only got two what? Two hands. So what you going to do? And really, he says, whatever you set your what? Hand to. So really, you find one thing at a time and dominate it. Oh, that's good news. Y'all don't get quiet now. That's good. That means things can change. See, otherwise we just hear about authority and ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Lord gave me revelation today on see how to see change come. He says, how many, he, he said it like, how many hands you got? Because I, I can look at some things need changing in my life, can you? And anybody else? Anybody got anything needs changing? See, most of us could say, I can rattle off a hundred things right now need to change in my life. Well, you can hear about authority all day long, and if you don't realize, you're going to have to tackle them one at a time. And if you're real good, you got two hands, you can go two. <laughs> Amen. See, but if you can't, you, see, you got to be real good to put two on it. So let's go one thing at a time. Because if you don't take authority over what's out of control in your life, it's going to control you. Amen. Man, this is awesome. Because there's some things changing at my house. Amen. And I needed to, how many of y'all know we need revelation knowledge? Because otherwise you're going to hear you got authority. Tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing going to hurt you. Praise the Lord. What do I do? I find something to now figure out what it is. Where is my starting place going to be? How many of y'all ever been on a horse out of control? Anybody ever been on a horse out of control? Anybody, I, I remember when I was growing up, they put us on a horse, slapped it on the rear end, it was on a dirt road, and I had shorts on. Man, that was bad, too, boy, I'm telling you. Rough right there now. I'm like, oh! And then, it wasn't good the next few days, amen? And I'm sitting there on this horse with shorts on, and I mean, it, just, it was just right, bad stuff. But I'm sitting there riding, and I mean, he got out of control. And you know what I had to do? I had to pull back, and I had to holler, whoa, whoa, whoa! I mean, have you ever been through something that seemed out of control in your life and you the one going to have to pull back and say, ho, 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 hold on. No, nah, no more, devil. I've been out of control right here too long. It's time to get things back under control. And if you don't pull back and say, whoa, 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 say, hold up. Say, that's enough right there. You, no, 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 no. No. See, if the whole house is out of order, you got to start in one room. Oh, amen. Now you got to figure out what you're going to put your hand on first. Is it going to be the dishes? Is it going to be Jake's room? Is it going to be Julia's room? Is it going to be the clothes? Is it going to you got to start what? Somewhere. Authority. The root word in authority is what? Author. And an author knows the end before he starts writing. But if he don't ever start writing chapter 1, he'll never get to the what? End. Oh, authority. If you're going to author this thing, and I know your pen is the tongue of a ready writer, then I know you're going to have to start somewhere. Tonight. Oh, ain't nothing going to change for you if you don't start. Oh, and that's the hardest part is starting. Amen. I mean, I know the hardest time to get on a treadmill is just starting. Now, once you get going, it's all right, but it'll talk trash to you sitting in the room. I got one in my bedroom, and I look at it, and it don't really talk, but it talks trash to me. I wake up, and I look at it and say, you do not want none. I said, no, I don't want none. You going to get on me? I said, no, I ain't getting on you. Don't get on me. I said, I ain't getting on you. I told you I'm going to get in the shower right now. I don't quit talking to me. Why? Because you don't want to start. 
But if you can get started, you can get what? Finished. Oh, and if things are out of order real bad, find you somewhere to begin. Because you only got two hands, and if you got 20 messes, you are going to sit there, and it's going to overwhelm you. That's why a lot of people never get started, because everything's messed up. Man, this is so awesome, too. Because I'm back, one at a time. One, knock that out, knock that out, knock that out right now. Because I got authority, and authority means control, power, and dominion. And if I don't take the dominion, God's not going to do it. Say amen. Man, I'm telling you, this, this changes lives right here. This message can change you. Oh, yeah, because see, I done told y'all, I drank a little bit more after I got saved. I gambled a little bit more after I got saved, and not perfect today, but continual change. Amen? I mean, I know we read last week where he says, continue in the Word. Those who continue in my Word, they are my disciples. Amen? You're not going to get it all today, so just keep on. Amen? Woo, I, may, I might even get the CD. Hallelujah, I'm telling you, I might buy the thing. Amen? Because what I'm talking about is simplifying everything. Because if life is complicated, it's not God. If your life is complicated, God didn't make it complicated. Complicated things need to be simplified. Take you one problem. There is therefore now no condemnation about the rest of them you got going on. Take one and knock it out. Take dominion and then talk trash to the devil. Amen. Say, hi, I got that one too. And you know what? I got a testimony now. And I, you know what? I, I'm going to be able to tell everybody. And once you get a testimony, there's nothing the devil can do about it. Now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you start knocking this out. And then knocking that out. And then knocking this out. Because I got two hands and I got 20 messes. But I'm going to find somewhere to start because I am the one writing this book. Amen. Now, all of a sudden, I step up. I take the authority. I see the change. I see the change. I see the change. You can cry out to God, and you can say, Lord, change this, change this, change this. He don't answer those prayers. I just want to be honest with y'all tonight. Lord, please change this situation. He goes, oh, sweetie, I, I, I gave you the authority to do it. So if you'll take the authority, you can take control of it, because authority ultimately means control, power, dominion, and authority, amen, to reign in life, amen. And Paul said it like this. He said those who receive Jesus have been given their authority back to reign in life. That's really what he was saying right there, amen. So we got to be able to figure out where to start. Anybody want to know where to start? Oh, at, let's say at the beginning, amen. Because complicated things bring complications. And you know what the devil wants to do more than anything is complicate your life. Because if he can complicate your life and get you super busy and have a lot of things messed up, he knows that's going to cause complications. And complications come because we're not taking what? Control. But if we'll start taking control, the complications will slow down. Amen? Amen. That's what the enemy wants to do is get everything complicated. God's not complicated. I mean, I know God, everybody say this is easy. Oh, I'm going to show you how easy too. Jesus broke it down. See, isn't, aren't you glad that he is not real deep, but he's real simple? See, a lot of people don't believe that. They think, oh, God, it's just hard to do that book. That's the devil preaching to you. I mean, I know you can do what Jesus said you can do, or he lied. Amen? Go over here with me real fast. One thing, say one thing at a time. Complicated is not God. It's time to pull back and say, whoa. That's enough right there. That's out of control. What, you're going to have to pull back at some time and say, no, 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 finances. Then yeah, We got things. To, I, I, we're going to be doing it with you. Amen. Anybody want to do this or just amen it? Anybody want to do it? Anybody want to get stuff in order? Emotions in order? Finances in order? I'm talking whatever in order. Amen? There's a lot of things if you sit there and think, well, I could get that in order. I know I, I, could, be a lot, I, could, I could have a lot more joy. Anybody would like more joy? Amen? So how about we get fear and depression and anxiety under control? Amen? Oh, y'all thought I was just talking about drinking or cussing or doing something like that or gambling or... or no, I'm not talking about... All, I'm talking about anything you got controlling you is complicating your life. Because complicated things are out of order. And if you get things in order, things get less complicated. 
Oh, and then think, well, praise the Lord. Look at this. Next thing you know, you look up and change doesn't happen. Oh, well, we're going to get to taking authority over the devil. We're going to get to taking authority over cancer. We're going to get to taking authority over uh, the city. And, and we're going to get to authority, authority on all that. But let's start with us. Say amen. amen. Say, Pastor, that was good. So let's start with us because we all want to go run devils out of town. And if we out of control, how's the devil going to listen to us? You know they know who to listen to. I mean, I remember Paul, cast, they, they cast one out. The sons of Sceva cast one out. They said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know. Who are you? I mean, I know the devil ought to know who you are. You've been whooping him all over town, and he, matter of fact, he sees you coming, and he takes off running. I got to go right here, though. Praise God. I didn't, even, I, I didn't mean to get off on some trails there, but I mean, praise the Lord. Anybody got anything yet? Hallelujah. Oh, I have, and I'm going to tell you right now, Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 37. Because we all got to take inventory right now. Right now. And if there's something out of control, Jesus is going to show us how to get it in control. Amen? Oh, I'm, amen. See, you, you might be thinking a whole, about a lot of other things. But I'm going to show you the root of it. And if you can get the root right, you can get the fruit right. <laughs> if you can get the root right, you can get the fruit right. You can start seeing the results you're trying to see. But if a root ain't right, the fruit ain't going to be right. So watch what Jesus said. He, he said in uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Matthew 22, 37. Let's see now. Because we talk about getting everything in what? Order. So is there an order? I wonder if there's an order to order. I wonder if there's an order to order. I believe we're going to see if Jesus said there's things that need to be in order. So now we're talking about simplifying your authority and doing it priority by a priority by a priority by a priority. Isn't that good? Oh, I know. Uh, you know, you can, you can war in tongues and speak to the devil all day long, run around the house shouting and dancing. But we, let's, let's take control. Anybody want to take control? Because here's the deal. I said it a while ago. If there's things in a mess and you got two hands and the house is in a mess, there's only so much your two hands can do unless you got a team of folks with authority. Oh, did you hear about Miss Thelma? Miss Thelma said, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Because I got a team of people in the front of me. And if we want to get things going and happening and taking authority, we can all now, I got two hands and give me 100 people, we'll get 200. Oh, now, you don't, now you're going to see how important it is you hook up with the church and take your authority and take your place in the body because now we can, we can take a city, take a town, dominate and take dominion right here in Niceville. Trees do fall. Land does come. Amen. Things do take place. Not because we got two hands on it because now, I mean, everybody raise your hands. Oh, we just doubled up in here right now. I thought it was just one of y'all. No, you all got a bunch of hands. We can put a lot of hands on something. Amen. I mean, I know the house will get clean a lot faster with a lot more hands on it. Amen. But at your house, if it's just you, you got to figure out how to get things prioritized. Here's Jesus makes it easy. Jesus said this. He said, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. This is the first. Say first. Say number one. Number one. Number one. Has everything else gotten so out of control that your relationship with God is out of control? Isn't it good, sweetheart? Yes, praise the Lord. It is. Because see, what happens is everything else gets out of control. Your Bible time stops. Your, your devotion time stops. You don't hang out with God, and everything else is messed up. And it all starts somewhere. It all starts somewhere. And you know what we got to do is say, you know what? No, no, no. See, the most important relationship in your life is with God. And the devil is subtle on how he gets us off track, isn't he? Oh, and you know what? We think we, it's justified that I'm thinking about bills, writing the this, doing that, everything else, money, 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 and kids, 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 work, 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 work. It is the trick of the enemy. Everything else falls into place when you got your priorities in what? 
order. But you know what? Nobody can get it in order for you but you. Can't nobody help your relationship with God but you. Ain't nobody going to hold a gun to your head and say, Get up and get in the Word right now, Big Dad. Okay. No, you're going to have to make a decision. And you know what's so cool is you can control this. Say amen. Got to do it at night? Do it at night. Do it in the morning? Do it in the morning. But you better get with God. Because he's going to be the one directing your steps and ordering your path. He's going to be the one that makes the crooked places straight and the mountains flat as wax. Amen. Mountain melt like wax in front. He's the one that's going to show you how to get it done. But here's the first thing we got to get at. See, and here's how it all starts, and you know it does. Your relationship with God. I didn't say about your finances. Your finances get straight if you get straight with God. Say amen. Your marriage will get right if you get right with God. Every time we fuss and argue, we know we hadn't been with the Lord like we need to be with Him. Pastor's right here, amen? How many of y'all know, we look at each other, we, I just need to go get with Jesus. Because He gives me what? Joy. And every time things get complicated and out of what? Order. Isn't it funny how peace and joy go? And peace guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hmm. What if we made things easy? What if we said, you know what? I can't fix everything today. I'm taking one thing at a time. And when I get real good, I'll take two because i got two hands. Amen? But if you don't take authority and get your relationship straight and right with God, there ain't nobody can do it in the building. And it has to be strong for you because it don't matter how it is for your spouse or your family or your grandma, your mama, your daddy. I'm talking about you and God. Say amen. I mean, I know he can take you a lot higher than where you're at right now. I mean, I know, but if you don't hang out with him, if you don't hear what he got to say, then you know what? He can't direct you that day. I mean, I know there's some blessings we miss out on when we neglect our relationship with the Lord. Oh, yeah, this, uh, he made the rule. Hey, who made this rule? Who's the rule? Who's the supreme alpha and omega, the beginning and the end? Jesus said before Moses was, I am. Before, before Abraham was, I am. And he said, we're saying sovereign means the what? Supreme ruler. The supreme rule what? Maker. And the rule he gives us first is he says, the first commandment is this, love God. Love on God. Have a relationship with God. I didn't come to make a religion. I come to give you a relationship. I mean, y'all know this is good news. Because I'm telling you this, if your house is out of order, first things first. Say first things first. Your relationship with God really spins off of everything else. It spins off of this relationship right here. And you know your priorities in your life is God, spouse, kids. Not kids, spouse. They moving out, amen? <laughs> they going somewhere at about 19, 20, and if they ain't going by then, we'll make them leave. Oh, amen. See, I know some people back home. I was youth pastor and associate pastor for 12 years back in Louisiana. And I do know this. There's some people that poured into their kids and didn't sow into themselves. Say amen, Danielle. And you know what? <laughs> She's like, praise the Lord. He's getting revelation. <laughs> and you know what? Because that's your number two thing. Because look what it says next. I'm sorry. I didn't finish reading it. And the next... Verse 29, it says the second. Say second. Second. So I got rule number what? One and rule number what? I got two, I got two hands. Now, if I can get things straight with God and my wife, because my neighbor, my closest neighbor, is in the bed with me. Say amen. Oh, glory to God. Now, if I got things, now if I can just get these two strong, it's tight with me and God, and it's tight with me and Danielle. Then you know what? That's a good beginning. Oh, now we might get the house in order. Now the kids might get straight. Now the finances might get right. Now the church might flow like it's supposed. Now everything might just run like clockwork and get in what? Get in order. Why? Because I have done taken control, and I done put things in what? Order. So how many of y'all have heard this? Set, you, set your clock back a little bit and spend you some time with God. And I, I, I gave some advice yesterday. Scratch it. 
I gave some advice yesterday, and you ever heard this? You at least ought to set aside date night for you and your spouse. Once a month, at least. You ever heard that? You need to date them. You need to chase them. Whatever you did to get them, you need to do to keep them. Amen? Chase your wife. Amen? Well, and then, the, and then I thought about this, because I know some pastors back in Louisiana do this. They make it a requirement for their church staff to date each other at least once a week. Because if you're not strong at home, you're going to be faking in here. Oh, we got a church smile. Praise the Lord. Everybody know that church smile. <laughs> there have been times I walk in and have an How you doing? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I lean over to Danielle and say, Forgive me, baby. I'm an idiot. <laughs> right there. Right here. Y'all don't know what I'm saying sometimes. I'm like, yeah, pastor. Oh, y'all fuss? Yeah, and you do too. Oh, yeah, but you know what I got to do is keep that strong. Amen. Because the Lord told me like this. If you're strong with me and you're strong within you, he says you won't schedule date time around once a week. He says if you're going to set your, what if you set your clock back an hour to spend time with her and me? Ooh, what if you sowed, what if you didn't sow into your marriage just once a week or once a month, but you sowed into it every day? And you got strong every day. And you had date time before the kids woke up. Say amen. You started the day right. Say amen. All the guys said amen. I'm talking about rom romance at 5.30 a.m. I'm giving y'all some revelation wisdom right now because I'm, I'm setting the clock. I done told Julia. She said, Daddy, when are you going to get up early? I said, I'm starting to get up earlier in the morning. She said, for real? I said, yeah, and way before you. And now, oh, oh yeah. And see, it's little things that get you off track. Because the enemy, don't, he wants things complicated in your marriage, complicated with your relationship with God. Because as soon as things get complicated, they get out of order and I'm not making this a rule or anything like that but I'm saying why once a week why now if this is my number two most awesome, most primary relationship right here why would I just sew into it around my schedule doesn't that I mean I, thought, I got to thinking about it I said hey, hold up I'm not going to work Danielle in to my schedule I mean I know that that might not be good it's better than nothing, but it's still, you. that's where most people got to get to is we'll start somewhere. Well, let's start at 5 a.m. Let's get up and drink coffee together and eat eggs and omelet and, and kiss. Right now. Say amen. Amen. Why not? Amen. We awake. So come here. Huh? 3 a.m. Don't matter to me. I'll tell you, I'll get up. I will wake up, baby. I'm <laughs> telling you. Wake me up. Push me. Hey, get up, boy. I'm like, come on. I'm up. <laughs> Number two primary relationship in my life. Right here. And the Lord told me this. He said, take control. Let's start here. He said, now, the second. We got number one and number what? Two. He said, start some. You got a lot of messes, right? I said, yeah, you're right, Lord. He said, how about we just start with the top and let's get it back super duper strong right here with me. And I got a strong relationship with God, but I'm saying, how many of y'all know it can be stronger? Amen? Amen. It can be there all the time. Amen? And it is easy. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is what? Light. Everybody come up to you and they see you now. They say, how you doing, Rodney? Boy, it's light and easy. How you doing? Light and easy on me, man. How are you? Why? Because I, I got peace with God. I got joy in my heart. And me and Danielle, we're doing good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, it's good, man. I'm telling you. Wouldn't, I mean, isn't it supposed to be like this? Why I get so, see, here's what happens with us, so subtle things of the enemy. And we're going to close. Praise the Lord. Man, that clock can't be right. But, we go. I don't even. I don't. Just turn it over. Amen. But no, I'm. I'm we're gonna leave. But Danielle got to go to work. She got to get up at three, and I'm gonna get up at four, five, six, six, 
Amen. <laughs> but <laughs> see, here's how this starts. Let me show you how this starts too. See, now we're gonna start taking. I just told Jake and Julia on the way to church tonight. I said we got new rules. See, if God made rules, how many of know you can make up your house? I said we got new rules. I am not laying down till you go to sleep anymore. I ain't laying with you no more. I, the, the last person I need to talk to every night is God, and the second to last is Daniel. First person I need to talk to is God, and the second one is Daniel. Those two relationships got to be tight as they can get. I ain't laying with you and sitting up in your, house, in your bed snoring <laughs> and wake up at 2.30 and fall out of bed and go in now. See if Daniel, she's done fell asleep a long time ago. She got to bed at 8.30, 9 o'clock. She's up here right now. <laughs> but you know what? It's little, little things. I mean, I've ever had that happen. Next thing you know, your relationship, everything else comes in and tries to get you, get things out of what? Yeah, out of order. Now you fell asleep in there, you got up, you're tired, back hurts. <laughs> wow, I done slept on the floor in Julia's room before because she used to wake up every time I'd move. I mean, when she was a baby, one year old, I'd lay in the, I would be in the crib. <laughs> I mean, you would do anything to get them to go to sleep. I mean, the side come down on it, you know. I didn't climb up in it, but the side would come down, and I would just sit there and act like I was asleep. You ever done that? Make them think you're asleep. And then you glance at them, you're like, they're asleep. Where are you going, Daddy? I ain't going nowhere. My God, I'm going to stay right. Need to go see my wife. Get in there. You awake? No, I'm not awake. Get off me. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking not off me, but get away from me, amen? <laughs> get away from me, amen? Don't be waking me up right now. It is, I got to work. I got to, oh, well, Frick, Julia, my goodness. So we're going to start, we're going to have some new rules in our house, amen? Amen. Because, see, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of things to get, I just need to pick me some stuff and get right. We're going to close on this. Go over to Luke real fast. Let's go home. I'm going to read this, will you, and let's go. Luke 10, Luke 10, 38. When there's a lot going on, it's complicated. When there's a lot happening, things get complicated. This is going to finish it off real good. Luke 10, 38. Let's go home. Luke 10, 38 says this. Now it happened as they went, he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was, y'all there? Martha was what? Distracted with much serving. And she approached Jesus and she said, Lord, do you not even care <laughs> that my sister left me to do all this housework alone? I mean, you got Jesus of Nazareth in your house. And she thought, man, we got to cook, we got to clean, we got to make it all right, we got to clean every room, we got to get everything straight. I got Jesus in the house. And she said, don't you think that she could get up and help me do something? And it says she was distracted with much. Watch what it says. And Jesus answered her and said, Yes, Martha, there is much blessing with multitasking. Is that what she... Oh, we got seminars in the world that teach us how to multitask. No, 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 Jesus didn't say, yes, sweetheart, you should learn to multitask a lot. Mary should be a lot more like you and have a hundred things going on. No, what did he say? It's amazing what he said to her. He says, Martha, Martha. Said it twice. Martha, 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 Martha. Watch what he said. Martha, Martha. You are worried and troubled. 
anxious about many things. Many things get complicated and complicate things. Watch this. What happens when things get complicated? Troubled, anxious, worry, fretful. Watch this. You are worried about many things and troubled, but one thing, say one thing. One thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. And it will not be taken away from her. What good part? She sat at His feet and heard His word. Oh, see, God, Jesus isn't going to say, you know, we, we think multitask. We need to multitask. The only the most multiple tasks you need to have going is two. You got two hands. Get this under control. Get that under control. And if your life's too complicated, it is not God. One amen, and that's my wife. Say amen. amen. See, comp- see, what if things were simple? And you said, you know what? Today I'm going to tackle this. One thing I'm going to do. First, I'm going to get at his feet and see what he got to say for today. Next thing I'm going to do is get my relationships around me. They're going to be strong. Primarily my wife. And if you're not married, keep it double strong with God. Amen? Amen? And here's what you do. Now, you, he's, you're sitting at his feet. He's told you what the day is going to have for you. And now, he's going to say, now take those two hands and go do this. But if you don't ever get at his feet, you're never going to hear what he's saying. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, Martha. You know... It, why are you troubled? That wasn't nothing. That was this right here. Amen. But uh, <laughs> you troubled. <laughs> you troubled. <laughs> Somebody looked like. <laughs> you got a lot of trouble going on here. Mary, he said, Martha, you got a lot of trouble. But Mary chose the right thing. He said, I'm not justifying you running around cleaning the house and getting everything done and taking care of all the bills, doing everything you do, and running around doing all that stuff. You got one thing you need to do first, and that's get with me. Amen? Amen. Say one thing. thing. Say, I can can. do this. This This is easy. This This is light. Everything in my life is about to get simplified. I will tackle and get in control my life. One thing. At a time, me and the Lord will talk about it tonight. And I will get things straight. Starting tonight, I begin. Right now, I am in control. I am taking authority, taking dominion, just like Jesus said I could. Starting now, right now. I did. The Lord done showed y'all something already. Amen. Let's start it with God. Amen. You got to get up 10, 10 minutes with Him ahead of you. You might not get up four hours early. and you, I, I'm not super good in the morning. Amen. Take me an hour to wake up. So I will get up at 3. Just get me up and I'll, pump, call, I'll wake up and I'll get on that treadmill. Been talking noise all this time. I'll just go ahead and get on it. No, I'm going to do one thing at a time. I'm not, I'm not going there tomorrow. Because ask Danielle, I tried to do a hunt. We got, what is that workout? P90X. That thing lasted two days. And I'm like, because I was trying to get, we was trying to get everything else. They do P90X, get the kids, get softball going up, got, got the church. Got the, Lord, I got, and all I got is two hands. He said, I didn't tell you to do it. That was Danielle's idea to buy that thing. I told her to do it, not you. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take up the offering to go home. Anybody get anything tonight? Praise God. Woo! I told you, that really is some of the best stuff I've ever seen. I'm just telling you right now, I already know it. I don't even need a pat on the back after service. That was good, because I already know it. That was good. It will change your life one step at a time. I understand that. I'm not being conceited, arrogant, nothing right there. The Word is good. And when He showed me that today, I'd never seen it. My lifetime. Not at Rama, not on TV, nothing. The Lord showed me that, and I said, my God, that is good. How many of y'all like fresh bread? Yeah. Amen. Fresh bread will feed you. Amen. Now, if you get, no, but here's the deal. You got to do it. The Bible says it's not the hearers that are blessed, but the doers of the word that are blessed. Amen. Amen. Let's pray over the offer to go home. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, we got a guest coming Sunday. If you want to go ahead, you can give your, we got, I'm going to take up.
man, it's, I don't like doing a bunch of offerings, but, you know, I'm not going to rob you of an opportunity to be blessed either. But uh, we got our outreaches. We, it's, it's warm outside, and I'm about to ready to hit the streets rolling. Amen. I'm right, about ready to go give away a lot of bicycles, give away a lot of Jesus, and go out into the community and head up to Crestview, go over to Freeport, go over to Defuniac, go on back down here to Niceville. We done hit Niceville a few times. We're going to hit some stuff. I hope y'all ready. I mean, raise your hands. Everybody give me, show me your hands. All I got to see. Just hold both of them up because I'm going to use both of them. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to put both of your hands to work. Hallelujah. And you ain't never seen people blessed like you're going to see them blessed. Amen. We're going to go take the word to people. Amen. They need to be in here and hear this. Amen. But that's happening too. Amen. We've got a foundation being formed. Amen. And if you're going to build something, you've got to have a what? Foundation. If the foundation is cracked, they'll shut the building down. Amen. Some of y'all glad we're getting the foundation. I love what God's doing here at the church. Amen. Hallelujah. I probably would have done it different, but he's God. Amen. He hung the moon up there. I ain't saying nothing. To hide. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the God. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you that we're blessed. We thank you, Father God, that we can rule, reign, dominate, control things in our life. We will begin right now taking control. We thank you, Father God. We're in control of our finances, Father God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. We'll obey your word concerning finances. We thank you, Father God, if we obey your rules concerning money, your rules will work for us. But if we, dis we, if, if we ignore your rules concerning money, then the blessing shall not show up. We'll go ahead and obey the rules and we'll give and we're blessed to be a blessing we thank you father that we're blessed coming in and blessed going out tonight the head not the tail above and never beneath and we thank you father god that we'll give with a cheerful heart and we thank you father in jesus name you multiply our seeds on amen, amen. hallelujah go ahead praise the lord say praise god shout when you put your check in amen <laughs> hallelujah you ought to get happy about giving. Amen. Aren't you glad you are here to give? Hallelujah. I know people that aren't here. Amen. You only have so many opportunities. Amen. Amen. The devil will lie to you all day long to keep you from getting involved with the blessing. Amen. So go ahead and just go. Just be led and be blessed. Amen. 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 The time will come when your time to, to give will be over. Say amen. Oh, yeah. Everybody's leaving here someday. And you won't be on your deathbed saying, I wish I wouldn't have gave so much. You'll be saying, I wish I'd have gave a lot more. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, the devil, he, he gets, he messes with people's head on money too now. Oh, it's complicated. My money's complicated. No, it's complicated because you got it complicated. God don't have your money complicated. Oh, my God. What, what, Lord, if he'll do this. No, no, no. It ain't. It's, it's, say it's easy. Say my money ain't funny. It's easy. Amen. Amen. If it's complicated, it's mostly in your head. That's where he starts it is in your head. Amen. I mean, I know he complicates everything. I talked to a guy that day. I said, you, what's a relationship like? It's complicated. How's your relationship? It's a complicated relationship. I said, who complicated it? Well, I did. It all started what? Right here. He works in your head. The Bible says, take captive every thought. Shut him up. Amen. I ain't listening to you no more. You're getting out of my head, out of my house, out of my money, out of my checkbook, out of my kids, out of everything. You're getting out. I want to evict. I'm going to take authority one thing at a time. And we're going to get this stuff in order. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's good. Be blessed. You don't have to go home, but, but I'm through anyway. Amen. Unless somebody else wants to do something. Praise God. Be blessed. Thank you all for coming. I went a little over, but I